Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. Not your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Hi, folks. Welcome back. Well, usually you see politics and government and all kinds of craziness on here. It's been a passion of mine, politics, since I was a small boy, but plus 50-odd years ago. But one of my other great passions in life is chess. And those of you that have watched my channel for years before, I really got heavy into politics. But once I got into politics, it kind of distracted me. But a game today was played in the candidates' final, they call it. It's eight players. They each play each other once around Robin. So that's seven games. And they played a few games prior to COVID. And COVID just put a monkey wrench into everything, of course, as it did the whole world. And it really should enough for the chess because they could have sat with a, even with a panel. But I'm not going to. It was Europeans. It was done in Russia. And you know how governments are overbearing there, almost as bad as we are in the states now, except for maybe some free states, which I call free states. But anyway, before I get into that, this is between a Wang Hao of China is white and Alexander Grishik is black. Now, Wang Hao is a really good guy, very low-key, great player. And you see up on the right, you see his name and his rating. And Alexander Grishik, they call him Sasha. He's Russian. Sasha's a really cool guy. I like Sasha a lot. And this is an amazing, amazing game. Now, if you look on the bottom right there, you'll see three lines of chess notations. That's the computer suggestion, which I'm going to have on the whole game here. So let's get to it. Wang Hao is white. Rishuk is black. And we'll go through the first few moves here. It's a French, as you see on the top of the screen here. It's a French classical system. That's when White goes from his first move from here to here. And then Black, first move is here to here. And that's considered a French. I don't, I don't, when I play White, I don't play E4 anymore just because I want to play against the French of the Sicilian, which I both can't stand. Those of you chess players who understand this, these people are all booked up. They got the moves memorized down the move 20, and it's not really playing, and it's just even the young guys. Anyway, let's continue on. After he threatened the knight, Wang Hao puts his knight back. Now, these are all probably things they've worked on, what they call preparation. For those of you out there that don't know, it's preparation. C5, C3 for white. Knight c6, f4, bishop e7. They're just playing through the opening here. Knight f3, knight f6, bishop e3, black castles, g3. And that's interesting. Queen there. Now, there's a lot of things. It's threatening, of course, to hit this pawn. It's, um, it's going to be tough to defend. You could go here with your pawn, but then this pawn here becomes backwards. Backward pawn means there's no pawns to defend it. So, Wang Hao decides... You could probably go queen here, maybe, and guard this pawn. But Wang Hao decides to go queen to d2 here, which he does. Pawn takes. Now, there's a lot of times in chess where they call tension. In other words, these pawns are attacking each other. These two pawns are attacking each other. And they had, these two have been attacking each other for a while. And what they call tension. The tension is 
they're attacking each other, but you don't take. And it's like it's almost an art in a way, knowing when to take and knowing when not to take. Those of you chess players know what I mean. Pawn takes, knight takes. I see on the computer on the right gives all the suggested moves. And if you see here where it says minus, minus means a small advantage for black. And if you see where there's no minus, in this case it's even and a tiny advantage for white. That's the way you read that, for those of you new out there. And he went night there, which I was really surprised. I'm, I'm a little shocked at that, frankly. But here's the thing. If he goes knight here, which would put a pin on this knight, because the knight moves, you lose the queen. But the fact of the matter is, in this case, when knight goes here, knight takes. If you take the queen, knight takes here and you're not really losing a queen. So he played E takes, B takes, knight B3, now he goes here. He decided not to take it, not to do all the trades, because that would cause a trade of queens and all their stuff. So he hits the queen instead. And this knight here is a very, a very strong knight. Those of you who don't know, what that means is white has no pawns on each side of him here to chase him off. He's sitting there unchallenged. And knights are really powerful when they're on the fifth square like that. Queen d3. Queen moves. Because it was being attacked. Bishop. The knight comes back. Now, the reason why he did that, you'll lose a pawn that way. Bishop threatened bishop takes. Pawn takes. Queen takes. So we decided instead just to move the knight back rather than lose that center pawn for free. I think that was just a waiting move, frankly. I'm a little surprised. The computer likes it as well. If you see on the bottom right, bishop f2 is the number one move. But castling a very, very close second. Now castling is... And as you can see over time, the computer changes its mind as it and does more analysis deeper and deeper. This video is going to be a little bit longer than my political ones. I hope you guys will uh, see right through it because there's some really, really cool stuff's coming. Knight C4. That's a powerful knight as well. There he is. And he's controlling all kinds of squares. Here, here, here. Right in White's camp. For those of you that don't know, it's kind of like in uh, an army when you have... You're sitting right on top of your enemy. It's a big advantage. So he just moves the queen back to protect the pawn on b2. Knight comes around. A lot of knight maneuvering. Knights are very tricky pieces. I don't care for black's position that much, but the computer shows it as just a small, small advantage. The reason why I don't like it is this bishop, he's got nowhere to go. He, the only place he has is to go here. But these guys are world-class players, and I'm not. Castling, that's when you bring your king into safety. Now, what I talked about before, this pawn is normally here. So the king is much safer. With that pawn missing now, you see all the open spaces on, on the king. Oh, a little screwy diagonal, but on the uh, dark square diagonals. E5. Black decides, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to hit this pawn. And if he decides to push, he'll probably push through, and it'll look really great for black. So white takes. And now he goes bishop to f5. Well, that's what they call an in-between move. You're saying, wow, his, his bishop's going to get taken here, but black is attacking the white queen. And this is where it gets freaking crazy. <laughs> Watch this. Now, look at the computer. Bishop takes d5 check. 
is one of the suggestions. In other words, Bishop takes this. That's one suggestion. The other suggestion is queen here, just to move the queen out of danger. That's one suggestion. But the third suggestion is on here. He just missed it. Queen of D1 going here was the other one. And it got pushed down below the top three moves. And that is pawn takes. And you're going, oh, my God. White's queen is hanging. It's just hanging here. The bishop can take. And that's what happens. Bishop takes. Now pawn takes. If you look on the screen here, you see on the right, right now, white has given up. Black has given up two pieces and a pawn for a queen. Now, those of you that don't want to keep scoring chess with the pieces are worth, the queen is worth eight or nine. These are worth three, three, and one. So that's seven to nine. So right now, it's, it's almost even. Tiny advantage for black as far as material goes. And this is crazy. Now, you got to remember something. We're on move 22. Grishika's black is down to like, I think he started with two hours on each side. He's down to like 10 minutes. These are complicated, complicated positions. They're playing the candidates. The winner of this tournament plays for the world championship. And if I'm not mistaken, the challenger's share of prize money is at least, if you lose even, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. I mean, we're talking about real money here. This isn't a joke. And so you got to have freaking nerves of steel. So he moves the rook, and the knight goes to F4 and hit that pawn. Now, right now, it shows just a small advantage for black, which is very interesting. I have no idea how Grishik, who they call Sasha, how Sasha sat there with that little bit of time that he had and figured this out. These guys are absolutely amazing to me. Amazing. Knight comes back to guard the pawn, because the knight's going to hit the pawn. Knight takes anyway. Knight takes, bishop takes. Okay, look at this. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. I mean, what do you do here? There's only one move. King's in check. He has to go Here. That's why they saw on the computer there's only one move. Knight to d4, put that knight in a really central spot, and he's hitting the bishop. This is an amazing game, absolutely amazing game. I just don't. I, I, these guys are such good players. It's just so incredibly, so incredibly good, these guys. And they're playing to go in the world championship. This is a big deal. This is like you're in the playoffs in football. And you do two or three really, really tricky and difficult plays in a row. And you know how it goes. The trickier it is, the easier it is to screw up. Moves queen there. Now if knight takes, you're thinking this, this bishop is just hanging. Queen will take the bishop and that will be even. Moves the pawn up to protect the bishop. Bishop g6. Knight e6. I mean, look at these pieces swarming in. And the weird part is the queen takes this pawn. It's, it's doom. You'll see in a second here. Rook takes... Rook to there, guarding the knight. Finally, knight takes g7. And you're thinking, oh my god. Why is he giving up that knight for free? I mean, if king takes, 
We can go through this here. I think they show it. See, if you see on the bottom here, if king takes, rook takes c7, queen takes d7, bishop d4, check. And it's craziness. So black decides, in massive time trouble, decides to just to play. Bishop takes. Rook takes, hitting the queen. Queen has to take. And then knight f5, hitting the queen. What to do, what to do. Queen goes to f8. Pawn takes, whoop, excuse me. Bishop checks first. The king has to move. Finally takes the bishop. Now look at our score here. Two pieces and two pawns for a queen. Just about even, and it shows a little advantage for white. But I got to tell you, this kind of craziness, you can go back because I'm going through this pretty fast. This kind of craziness for Grishuk is black under this tremendous time pressure. Absolutely amazing to me, these guys. I, I don't know why they don't have strokes and heart attacks. I mean, you don't understand the concentration and the nerves involved when they play, especially this high level. I'm only a 16, 1700 rated player, and I play in tournaments, man, and you get done with a two or three hour game, you are exhausted. Everybody goes, wow, how can you be exhausted? You're just sitting there. Well, those of you younger people out there that are in college or just recently out, think about this for a minute. You'll sit there and take a five hour exam. You're just sitting there, right? But your brain is constantly going. When you get done, you're exhausted. Exactly the same thing. H5, make a little escape for his, his king. His pieces are starting to swarm. D6, and I don't know those of you that don't know, if a pawn gets down to the last rank and is not captured, you can get what they call promotion. He can get another queen. So unless those pawns get down that far, it's pretty dangerous. King F7, knight E7. Now that knight is planted right there in that pawn protecting him. Queen goes there. Rook F6. Uh, computer's playing a little screwy with me here. Rook F6. And look at those pieces swarming around the king. This rook is sitting over here doing nothing. You've got a pawn, a knight, a rook, and a bishop in the attack on this king. With only the queen to protect it. Rook to d8. Finally, the rook gets into play. Bishop comes back. Now you're thinking to myself, okay, rook takes pawn. Well, he just gave up his rook for free. Well, actually, no. Rook takes, and then queen takes. What he did was... He decided to take away some of the attacking pieces. So now you basically have a rook and a bishop against the queen. And it's dead even. You can see in the score here, this is dead even. Absolutely dead even. We'll play out a few more moves. Rook to d4. King g6. a3. Queen e3. And... This is move 41. Normally, well, they had the second time control where you add time on once you have so many moves. So they had to do 40 moves in two hours. And it's just amazing. Once they hit the 41st move, Black, I'm sure, was down the seconds, got his time back. And so they decided to draw. Now, I haven't analyzed the game in a long time here. Uh, at this kind of level, I went pretty fast because these videos tend to go too long. But I'll tell you the truth, this is an amazing game. Go over it slower, set up a board. That's what I usually do if I really want to get into a game. If you have an analyst online, set up your board on the side. And as you move, look at the board and try to figure it out. It's an amazing game. And amazing the fact it was under time pressure. The winner of this tournament plays in the World Championship for a half a million dollars minimum as the challenger. 
And if you're lucky enough to beat Magnus Carlsen, who's the current world champion, the world is your oyster. Looking at a million bucks, and then you get another play, another again to defend your title, another million bucks. And this is big money, and this is huge deal for these guys. And there is that, that much money in chess at the high world level. But anyway, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm a little rusty. Sorry it took so long, and I was having some technical difficulties. But I'll tell you the truth, what a great game. Go over it slower. And I believe it's on FIDE Chess. I'll try to leave the link in the description uh, for the entire round where they show all the games. It's several hours long, but it's archived, so you can move along ahead if you want to. But it was just amazing, truly amazing. This is the greatest game in the world. You see games come and go, video games, other games. This is the greatest game in the world a hundred years from now as technology changes. How we play, online, of course, chess, and the other things we didn't have years ago before the internet. But chess is still chess. And it's still the greatest game in the world. And it'll always be the greatest game in the world. And until next time, folks, goodbye and good luck.